Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss 1958's Vertigo, starring James Stewart, Kim Novak, Barbara Bell Geddes, Geddes, forgive me if I said that wrong, and Tom Helmore, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Now, I have seen this movie before, but what did I think of it is going to be the same as I think of it now. So let's get into this movie. We get to opening credits on a woman's face, which is really freaky to watch this opening sequence as we start the movie with John Ferguson, a.k.a. Scotty, played by James Stewart, and a cop going after a criminal as he almost falls to his death, but grabbing Scotty's hand, the cop ends up falling down to death, which reminded me of the same episode of that 70s show I brought up last time, and I'm going to keep bringing that episode up per, ep per episode, except for Psycho, which I did do already. And I'll talk about that at the end, where Eric tries to get his ball back, and Fez takes it and climbs on the roof, and Fez ends up falling down to it. And that's how he got on the wheelchair and, like, and we're a window. As that's all, this is all connecting from the episode of that 70s show. And we get Scotty on a cane, and he has one or more day to move normally and getting rid of, rid of the cane as he quit the police force. And Scotty has vertigo from the first scene, and we hear what he's talking about in the first seven minutes of the movie. While at home with Marjorie Wood, or well, not his house, but the house of Marjorie Wood, a.k.a. Midge, played by Barbara Bell Geddes, who is taking care of him while drawing some art as they used to be engaged back in college days. And I like these two characters, and the cinematography is great to look at for the late 1950s. Midge gives Scotty a chair climb and looks up and down and gets vertigo as Midge catches him and we live on, move on to Gavin Elster, played by Tom Helmore, in an office where in San Francisco, which is where the scene is taking place, as well as this whole movie. And Gavin asks Scotty to follow his wife Madeline, played by Kim Novak, because he believes they might have some trouble, marriage troubles, and Scotty ends up reluctantly doing it for a friend, and the dialogue makes the movie sing from start to finish, and nighttime comes as Scotty follows Gavin and Madeline in a restaurant called Ernie's, and something does feel off about Madeline as Scotty follows her from place to place, and like I said last time, Hitchcock knows how to make a creepy scene, like he does here, and this is creepier than last time, and the score is old-fashioned, which is pretty old-school, Scotty continues to follow Madeline in a church that looks nice and walks around the cemetery. And the shots are beyond fantastic, as there's some great shots in this movie. And Scotty continues to follow Madeline in a museum as she stares at a painting of Carlotta, by Carlotta, excuse me, and continues to follow her once more and follows her in a big house, which looks gorgeous. And Scotty gets information from the hotel clerk as the production design in this movie is gorgeous as this is a gorgeous looking movie, in my opinion. The hotel clerk asks Scotty if he would like to look, and he comes upstairs to the room Madeline stays at, and he sees her car is gone, and Scotty comes home to Midge and goes to the library to investigate Madeline and talks to the librarian along with Midge about a missing child and how the mother died, and they get back in the car and tries to kick out Midge, and she asks Scotty about Cap Gavin's wife, and eventually walks out of the car and Scotty goes to Gavin in a private club and learns Madeline isn't his wife anymore. And the plot is very good, but why the hell is this movie called Vertigo? Because, because I don't know. Scotty doesn't get Vertigo all that much, but I'll go with it at this point as I do really like this movie very much. Scotty follows Madeline to the San Francisco Bay and she stares at it and throws flowers in the water and suddenly falls into the water, and Scotty saves Madeline's life by getting her out of the water and brings her to his home, and she sleeps on the bed until the phone rings. And Madeline wakes up and puts on her dress and comes to the fire, and their chemistry is wonderful, in my opinion. And Scotty asks Madeline questions about where she was all, at all day, and they talk about different places in San Francisco as they live in the places, in the places... They they love the places they go to, and I've been to San Francisco in my lifetime, and it's, it's a pretty city, and the movie portrays it very well. Gavin calls Scotty and tells her she's been dead for a while, and she suddenly disappears and drives away in her car, and the next thing comes, and Scotty follows Madeline for a while until she gets back to his own home, 
And Scotty talks to Madeline, and he gets his meal, and they enjoy talking to each other, and they wander around together. And Scotty says it's an it's his occupation, and that they stop by the Redwoods, which looks fantastic, as the shots in the Redwoods were fantastic. Scotty and Madeline hang out at, by the ocean, and they talk about their location, and she starts off to run, and he catches her, and he says he's got her. As nighttime comes, and Midge is painting in her apartment, and Scotty arrives, and he brings up how he's been wandering as it's her on the painting that looks similar to the one at the museum, and he walks out saying that's not funny. After she said she thought about giving it to him, and she rips it apart after he leaves the building as he goes back to his apartment and Madeline comes by and tells him about her dream as she doesn't remember where she's been to and that's at a, like she might have shirked her memory loss and next day comes and they continue wandering around and the locations are beautiful don't get me wrong they are they arrive at a barn where Madeline has been before and Scotty tries to refresh her memory and they start smooching while Madeline looks at another direction like it's too late. And she doesn't know she's in love with Scotty while Scotty is in love with Madeline. And they go inside a church and she goes up to the bell. And he's having vertigo for, from climbing up the stairs. And she jumps down and commits suicide, which made me sad because I really like them as a couple. And they have a court session about if Scotty murdered Madeline. As this works as a romance slash thriller and mystery... After the court hearing, Gavin tells Scotty he's getting out of San Francisco and says his goodbyes and goes to the graveyard of Madeline. And as Scotty sleeps, he has more vertigo, which we're haunting images while we get a bit of red on the screen and he wakes up frightened. And Midge comes by his room in a mental hospital where he, was at, he says absolutely nothing. And Midge chats with the doctor as she learns he blames himself because of his love with Madeline. And she walks away worried, and this is turning kind of depressing, but I'm still enjoying the movie that too much. Scotty freaks out over a car Madeline had when she was alive, and he sits at a bar and sees a Madeline lookalike with another man named Judy Barton, also played by Kim Novak. And Scotty thinks about getting this lookalike a pair of flowers as he follows her to the Empire Hotel, and he goes upstairs and asks Judy a couple of questions and learns about her like she's from Kansas, for example. As she yells at Scotty and she learns his lover is dead and apologizes for yelling at him. And Scotty asks Judy out to dinner and he starts to remember what happened to Madeline as Gavin throws someone else's body while Scotty was led to believe Madeline is dead. And Judy writes a note saying he found Madeline as she lied to him and... She still loves him, and that was what the twist? I didn't see that coming right off the bat, as that was a genius move by Hitchcock. Madeline rips the piece of paper and packs her things and shows up for to dinner with Judy and brings her home, and Scotty asks to see Judy again, and she says no, but Scotty doesn't like that answer, and he sees Madeline and Judy as she decides to not go to work the next day. And they walk around some beautiful locations and dance with the, one another and buys her a cord, corsage, or garage, excuse me, garage, as well as trying on some gray suits. And their chemistry isn't as good as the chemistry between Scotty and Madeline is better for me. And he forces her to try on a gray suit and to make her look like Madeline. And Scotty comes off like an a hole and controlling to her. And I don't like him in that scene. And them as a couple was a little strange to me. Scotty changes Judy's personality to make her like Madeline's personality, which is very forcing as he asks her to change her hair, which is very disrespectful in general, and Scotty waits for Judy and she comes back to the room and goes and she goes in a different room and sees Madeline and Judy and they smooch for a bit and we move on to Scotty and Judy going out to dinner as he sees the red necklace on her neck as it was on the painting, and he learns it's Madeline without feeling at her about telling her about it. And they go to the place, excuse me, where she died earlier in the film, as Scotty frightens Judy by taking her to where Madeline died, and he goes up all the way this time to the tower, and this time he tries to throw her out and sees a nun and throws her off, and Scotty thinking, what have I done? And the climax was a twist I didn't see coming, as it was one of the most satisfying climaxes 
I've ever seen as one of it's one of the best along with Psycho from the 1960s. And I'll explain why in a rating. I'll give this movie a 9.1 out of 10. I like the characters throughout the movie as the acting is well done and the cinematography is great to look at for the late 1950s. And the dialogue makes this movie sing from start to finish. This movie is creepier than last time and old fashioned like it was pretty old school and I dig it. And the shots in this movie are fantastic as there's some great shots in this movie from start to finish as the production design looks gorgeous throughout as this is a gorgeous looking movie. The plot is very good, and despite I like this movie very much, but why the hell is this movie called Vertigo, as the main character doesn't have it too much, like only a few times, but because it's a great movie, I'll go with it. And it, it is a strong recommendation, but not as strong as Psycho from 1960, and director Alfred Hitchcock does a great job with the movie, as the chemistry between Scotty and Madeline is wonderful in the movie, in my opinion, and it portrays San Francisco quite well. Now, before I le let you guys go... There is an epi there is a uh, moment from that episode of that 70s show from Psycho where where Kelso goes in the shower and Lori tries to hit him with some like with something. I forget what it was. It wasn't a knife, but it was something soft. And then he wastes all of her shampoo, Lori's shampoo, Eric's sister, I mean. And and that's a great recreation to Psycho. And that's two Hitchcock references in this show from that 70s show. One, and that makes it a total of three. One from last time and two from this show. And I will be back next time and I will see if there is any in the birds. Because there's, trust me, there is one that I could bring up. But I'll get there when I get there. But I'll be back in two weeks with the birds. And until then... Reep, 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 reep. Oh, and I forgot. I already reviewed Psycho. Reep, reep. So you don't have to see it anymore any further. So go back to that review and you'll see it. Beep, 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 beep.